Hello, this is Jennifer Dasinger with A Plus College Ready, and I hope you can speak chemistry in now. Today, we're gonna to be looking at the mole concept. And on this first slide, I love this funny, it's hilarious, it's got Amadeo Avogadro and his little number down at the bottom of 6.022 to the power of 23. Well, let's talk what the mole is. A mole is used to represent an amount of substance. It can be written to show the number of atoms or molecules in a working sample of an element, a compound, or a molecule. So if you notice in this picture here, this is an electron microscope of atoms. And you don't have an electron microscope at your school, so it takes a very huge amount of power to show how small atoms and molecules truly are. Well, since we can't see them, we have to come up with a value to represent a group of these atoms or molecules. If you notice in this next picture, I have a variety of elements here and compound form. So if you notice, the first one is sodium chloride, then I've got iron, three chlorides. I walk around to the left from left to right, copper sulfate, the blue substance in the back, one of my favorites, potassium permanganate, the purple substance, um, potassium iodide, the white powder on the right-hand corner, and then we've got the cobalt nitrate. And if you notice, they all have different masses, but each one of these represents one mole of a substance, and that's huge. So we can't compare mass, but we can compare moles. So of course, be able to calculate moles. We're always gonna have to use our handy dandy periodic table that's pictured on the left, because we'll need to look up the atomic mass of each element, or to be able to calculate the molecular mass of a molecule. And then if you notice on the right, we, of course, have to measure something in grams in lab and then convert it, of course, to the amount of moles we have. Well, Amadeo Avogadro, from our first diagram, there is always one mole of a substance will contain 6.022 to the power of 23 atoms. So if you notice to the right, the breakdown here, whether you're talking about an element such as aluminum, if you're talking about a molecule, your Brinkelhoff, if you will. And this is a group of seven diatomic molecules on your periodic table that actually make a seven. So when I talk about diatomic, I'm talking about that all have a subscript of two that follows the element. So follow it through with me. Br, two, that's bromine. I, two. N, two. Cl, two. H, two. O, two, and last but not least, fluorine, two. So those elements are found in nature in pairs, and those are your seven diatomic molecules. You probably learned about them in your bonding unit. The last one is formula units. So for an ionic compound, yes, one mole is equal to 6.022 to the power of 23 formula units of that compound. Mole math is a pictorial way of using dimensional analysis, so as a reference. So if you notice, the left diagram shows that you're going from atoms, molecules, to moles in the center, and grams to the right. I like the one on the right in terms of the mathematical application. So if I was going to start with grams, like we do in lab, if I wanted to know how many moles I needed, I would have to divide, go up, follow the up arrow, I would have to divide by the atomic or molar mass of that substance. Then if I wanted to know how many from moles I have, how many atoms or molecules, I would multiply by Avogadro's number to get my number of atoms or molecules of that substance. And vice versa, if I'm going from atoms to moles, I would divide by Avogadro's number. If I'm going from moles to grams, I would multiply, I call it multiply, by the atomic mass or molar mass. At this time, I want you to pause, go to your student notes, so therefore we can follow along some basic examples, especially in Roman numeral two, of how to do these conversions.
Okay, so thanks for joining me again. As we go to our student notes, Roman numeral two, I've walked you through some basic unit conversions with the mole concept. Letter A and letter B are showing you when you're given a gram quantity, how it is greater than one mole and how it is less than one mole. But essentially, look at the question on letter A. How many moles do you have when you're given 21.6 grams of boron? Well, I know by looking on my periodic table that there are 10.8 grams from my periodic table for my boron, and I will use that to divide as my numer as my excuse me as my denominator, and of course use my given value of the 21.6 grams as my numerator to get the two moles of boron. Then, when you are doing a calculation that is going to be less than a mole. On letter B, it says, how many moles do you have when you're given 16.03 grams of sulfur? Well, I know from my periodic table that there are 32.06 grams of sulfur in every one mole of sulfur. Therefore, I will take my numerator, my given, and divide it by the atomic mass of my element of sulfur, which is 32.06, and I will get 0.5 moles of sulfur. So on letter C, here's the basic pattern that you always want to make sure you have. Units given divided by units given. Multiply by units wanted. And you will always get the unit that you want. The unit given cancels out. So you will always have the unit that you want. So follow the units. As I always say, no naked numbers, please. That would be, be a little scary for all of us. All right, so let's walk through some dimensional analysis conversion problems. On, on number one, I'm going from moles to atoms. So follow along with your mole map on your periodic table or draw that if you want to pause now and look at that while we're going through these problems as well. The question asks, how many atoms of copper do you have when you're given two moles? Well, I know for every one mole of copper, that's right, it equals to Avogadro's number of atoms of copper. So I will take my given value of the 2.0 moles of copper. I will multiply that by Avogadro's number because that's my ratio, Avogadro's number over one mole. Notice my moles will cancel and I'm left with 12 to the power of 23 atoms of copper. However, if we're using significant figures, we need to convert that to where we have the decimal moved one place so that I have 1.2 to the power of 24 atoms of copper because my given value had two significant figures. Okay. All right. As I'm scrolling down the other way, excuse me. Okay. Number two, I'm going from atoms to moles. Let me keep scrolling here. And how many atoms of zinc do you have when you go from, when you're given 1.806 to the power of 24 atoms? Now in step one, I give you the option of converting it to 23. And that's simply just so that I can cancel out to the power of 23 and just divide. But you can leave it as the original value and plug it in. Notice your significant figures. You do have four significant figures in the 1.806. So therefore, my answer has to be 2.99 moles of zinc. Number three, I'm going from grams to moles. So if you're following on with the mole map, if I'm going from grams to moles, I will divide by the molar mass of that element, which is the 12. And on your periodic table, it's probably 12.01. I just shortened it so that I can keep things simple for myself to give an example. So 54 essentially divided by 12 is 4.50 moles of carbon. Again, the next one, number four, you're going from moles to grams, the opposite direction. So if I have 8.5 moles of fluorine, I know from my periodic table, that I will have for every one mole of fluorine as my denominator, my numerator will be the atomic mass of fluorine of 19. And that will give me the 161.5 grams of fluorine. Now, sig fig time. I have two sig figs in my problem of 8.5. So I will have to round that to 160. Number five, this is where we get to the two steppers. And on our two steppers, we're going to go from grams to moles and then to atoms. So in our divert, 
In our dimensional analysis, if you notice, I know one mole of oxygen, part of Brinkelhoff, right, is equal to 32 grams. Don't forget, oxygen itself is 16, 15.99, but I use 16. Times two will give you that 32 value. And then I will take my one mole of oxygen, which is, of course, equal to Avogadro's number, of that diatomic molecule. So I always start with your given. I got to get rid of grams, so I'm going to divide by the molar mass of that diatomic molecule. Then I will multiply the Avogadro's unit to get my particles or molecules, if you will, of my oxygen. And that's where I get the 2.3 to the power of uh, 52 to the power of 22. However, sig fig time. I was originally given a 1.25. So I have to round my answer to just 2.35. That 2 will not raise that 5 up. So I have this phrase, bow and below hit the flow, and 5 and up raise it up. It's just kind of funny so we can remember how to round, if you will. Number 6, now we're going from atoms or, or particles, which are molecules, to moles to grams, another two-stepper. You're given grams of sodium solid, and they want to, that's what they want to know. And then you're given 3.01 to the power of 23 atoms of that sodium. Well, write down things that you know. I know for every one mole of sodium, there are 23 grams of sodium from your periodic table. I also know for every one mole of sodium, is equal to Avogadro's number of 6.022 to the power of 23 atoms of sodium. I'm going to take my original given of the 3.01 to the power of 23 atoms. I'm going to divide by Avogadro's number. Then I'm going to multiply by the molar mass or atomic mass of sodium, if you will, to get my 11.496 grams of sodium. Sig fig check. My original problem had three significant figures of 3.01. Remember, we don't count to the power of. So I'm going to have to now round that value to 11.5. That 9 will change the 4 to a 5. This is your basic mole concept conversions. So I hope this is helpful for you. And I hope that you get to celebrate Mole Day every year on October 23rd from 6.02 in the morning to 6.02 or 6.02 in the evening keep mulling